Okay, hi everyone again. This is Arish Salaime, and uh, I just finished my PhD degree on December 2020 from the Department of Computer Science at Wayne State University. Uh, and this work uh, uh, has been done as part of my PhD degree. Currently, I'm an assistant professor at Lawrence Technological University. My paper title, Multi-Asian Reinforcement Learning for Optimizing Traffic Signal Timing. Transportation systems are the cornerstone of modern economies. And when it comes to moving things around, there is nothing that is more important than the road transportation system. Every day, millions of cars and the trucks move through our roads to transport people and goods to ensure vehicles can move efficiently and safely, like is, is a key to our life. As the number of vehicles increase, the pressure on the transportation system increases, leading to more congestion, which has economic and environmental consequences. Intelligent transportation systems offer solutions and improvements for transportation problems using computational intelligence. Urban transportation systems are governed by automated control system like traffic signal controller which is broadly classified as pre-timed and adaptive. Pre-timed methods do not consider the current state of traffic at the intersection, having just fixed phase and cycle durations that repeat the same phase sequence. And these methods are predictable, stable, and simple to develop, and may not be optimal. On the other hand, the adaptive traffic signal controllers can dynamically change the cycle duration phase duration, or phase sequence to improve safety and mobility. Adaptive methods strive for optimality at the cost of being more complex and expensive. Transportation systems experiences dynamic, stochastic, and high dimensional environment. And we need to have optimal control policy that adapt changes and uncertainty in the transportation systems in order to maximize road safety and the traffic flow and minimize cost and congestion. Our main objective here in this paper is to develop a framework to find the optimal control policy for optimizing traffic signal timing that can adapt to dynamic environments in order to reduce congestion and improve traffic flow to overcome the limitation of the pre-timed traffic signal controller. So we want to find the answer uh, for the questions like, what decisions should the traffic signal make and how can we create a scalable solution? Early efforts to solve this problem developed like traffic control systems, but their relatively complex computation and the need for modeling the environment make the implementation less popular. Current research using reinforcement learning shows promising results to solve the traffic signal control problem in complex urban traffic network, starting by using tabular queue learning, which was first applied at an isolated intersection. And then later, some researchers have applied deep reinforcement learning techniques, combining reinforcement learning with deep neural network function approximation. Despite the history of reinforcement learning, only a few studies have address multi-agent reinforcement learning to solve the traffic signal control problem. And most of them use the Q-learning with deep Q network. Our approach extends this line of work by making a key contribution as we develop a multi-agent deep reinforcement model using double deep Q network based on double Q-learning and hindsight experience triplet. The use of reinforcement learning for traffic signal control is motivated by several reasons. First, the traffic signal control problem is a sequential decision-making problem where time really matters and sequential. Here, we are talking about like uh, sequential steps, one after the another. The agents need to make decision, big actions, and see how much rewards the agent gets. Here, we are not just talking about like just data sets and we want to learn about. Here we have a system where the agents need to take action. Since the traffic signal problem can be modeled as sequential decision-making problem, reinforcement learning is an obvious candidate 
solution. Also, we can formulate the subproblem as model-free reinforcement learning. Model-free reinforcement learning makes no assumptions about the model as no model required, since the agent learns using the system performance metric, the reward. No supervisor. Agents can self-learn without supervision prior knowledge of the environment. There is no supervisor, only a reward signal. No one tells us the right action. If an agent is trained well, then can learn how to act in like uncertain environment, which can handle the uncertainty in our problem, for example, bad weather or accidents. The standard cycle of reinforcement learning is shown here in this figure. The learner and the decision maker is called agent, which interacts with the environment. At time t, agent observes the environment states and then choose an action. After taking action, the agent receives feed feedback in the form of numerical reward, which tells the agent how good the action. The agent seeks to develop a policy like mapping from state to actions. The agent ultimate goal is not to just develop a policy, but to develop an optimal policy which maximizes cumulative discounted future rewards, what known as return. There are different algorithms to solve Markov decision process and PPs and find the optimal policy. And here we use the Q-learning algorithm as it is value-based of policy reinforcement learning algorithm used to estimate the optimal action value function through repeated environment interaction. Action value function is the expected return starting from state S, taking action A, and then following policy phi. It tells us how good it is to take a specific action from state S. We derive the optimal policy by developing an optimal action value function, Q star. It is the maximum action value function over all policies, which describe the best possible performance in the MDB. But when we have large MDBs, we need large number of states and number of actions to store in memory. And it's too slow to learn the value of each state individually. So uh, the solution is by using function approximator that will help reducing the uh, memory and also help in generalization. We can approximate the optimal action value function using an artificial neural network. Or once sufficiently approximated, the optimal policy can be derived by selecting the action with the highest value. Q-learning is known to learn sometimes unrealistic high action values because it includes a maximization step, overestimated action values, which tends to prefer overestimated to underestimated values. Hasselt introduced a new off policy double Q learning algorithm by applying double estimators to Q learning to find and estimate for the maximum value of a set of stochastic values. So, two networks that can be used to update each other. This decouples updates from bias estimate. It stores two functions, QA and QB, and uh, each Q function is updated with a value from the other Q function for the next state. To perform experience reply, we store the agent experiences at each time step in a data set. Agent experiences consist of a state, action, reward, and next state. During learning, we apply Q-learning updates on samples of experience drawn uniformly at random from like the pool of stored samples. All these experiences encountered during training are stored in replay buffer. Hindsight experience replay has a different technique to replay memory. The key idea of the hindsight, or sometimes we call it HER, H-E-R, is to replay each episode with a different goal than the one the agent was trying to achieve. Basically, is to re-examine the trajectory with different goal. While the trajectory may not help us to learn how to achieve state X, for example, it definitely tells us something about uh, 
how to achieve another state. After experiences like uh, some episodes, we store them in the replay buffer, not only with the original goals used for this episode, but also with a subset of other goals. This will offer the ability to learn even from a failed experience. The problem tackle in this work is defined as follow, given the state, which is the environment dynamics, the agent, agent here uh, represents the traffic signal, needs to select the best action. What is the best action is which traffic signal phase in order to maximize the total reward, improving traffic flow and reducing delay. To do this, we propose a multi-agent reinforcement learning model. Uh, the, uh, in the proposed uh, model, uh, here we'll start uh, the, uh, go over the uh, state's actions and uh, the reward function. Uh, when we say state, state is a feature representation of the environment. And the objective of state representation is to let the agent know the position of vehicle inside the environment at time step t. We also keep track of vehicles by storing vehicle ID, speed, and position. An agent has access to car's information in the intersection for which it is responsible. Agents do not have like uh, direct access to information for other intersections to more realistic realistically model like a real scenario. The chosen design for the state representation is focused on realism. As in reality, like uh, it's difficult to obtain more information and we want to show that with simple and easy representation to apply, we can get good results. The action space identifies the possible green faces that the agent can take. The task of the agent is to initiate a green phase, choosing one from the action space. Like uh, the color phase trans transition in this sequence, like red, green, yellow, red. And the green time initially is set to 10 seconds, and the yellow time is fixed time is 4 seconds. And as you can see, the uh, four possible uh, actions the agent can take are shown here in figure B. To train the agent, a microscopic traffic simulator is used as the environment SOMO. Uh, like uh, there is a single agent governing the traffic signals at the intersection in order to not have conflicting traffic signals that are physically impossible or could lead to accidents. The agent responsible for selecting the next green traffic phase from a set of possible phases. During the simulation, the agent gets the state from the SOMO environment and uses that as input to calculate the reward function. Information about the previous simulation step data is drawn from the memory. Once the reward function is calculated, the agent selects a new action and updates the environment. A multi-agent system is a system where like multiple agents uh, share an environment and can uh, communicate with each other. We designed the system to be as a cooperative multi-agent where each intersection is controlled by a local agent, upon local observation and limited communication. Each local agent learns its policy, its own policy independently by modeling other agents as part of the environment dynamic. Uh, as we can see uh, here in this figure, like basically in this work, we uh, use the independent double key learning as a way to let agents learn its own policy. Agents can get information about traffic flow from um, adjacent intersections. Uh, to achieve this, each agent knows its agents intersections and it receives data from them. Uh, for, for example, in this figure here, uh, intersection B gets its traffic information from intersections A, C, D, and E, while intersection A gets information from intersection B. 
Uh, now, after the agent has observed the state of the environment, the agent will receive the reward to evaluate the action. Reward is the element that differentiates reinforcement learning from other types of machine learning. The agent seeks to develop a policy which maximizes the sum of future discounted reward. The criteria that we use to calculate the reward function is the queue length, average waiting time, throughput, average speed of vehicles when leaving the intersection, and average speed of vehicles when arriving at interception. Uh, this is the set of running configuration, um, double deep Q network with experience replay, deep Q network with hindsight experience replay, and the third configuration is the double deep Q network with hindsight experience replay. And we evaluated these configurations during peak traffic and off peak here are the hyperparameters for our experiment. And we evaluated the performance of the three different configurations based on three metrics, delay in seconds, queue length, and car speed. Uh, in this set of experiments, the aim is to see uh, if the proposed, the proposed, uh, proposed reward function will lead to less cumulative waiting time for cars going through that intersection. Um, in this set of experiments, we use the uh, hand size re experience replay as the experience replay engine. We can see here that uh, the proposed double DBQ network in a blue color results in less cumulative delay for peak traffic compared to uh, DBQ network. Both are using uh, her or hand site experience replay for flight memory. Uh, here, the same setting as the previous set of experiments with off peak traffic. As we can see clearly, that the double DQ uh, network with hand site has less cumulative delay. The one that in blue line. We also conducted uh, like uh, a set of experiments to show how uh, hand size experience replay can improve the cumulative delay time. We saw slightly better cumulative delay with running uh, hand size experience replay against replay experience during peak traffic. Here we see uh, comparable delay times uh, during off peak traffic experience experiment between double DBQ network uh, with hand side uh, experience replay versus double DBQ network with experience replay. Tables here show the uh, different metrics we evaluated for the different configurations. Uh, observe that the average car speed is highest for double DBQ network with hand side experience replay in peak and off peak traffic. In addition, observe that the uh, double DBQ network with hand size has the least average queue length and the least average delay. When evaluating hand size experience replay, double DBQ network gives better results compared to using that replay experience. If we compare just DBQ network versus double DBQ network, note that the uh, double DBQ network gives better results. We can see that the performance gains are larger when uh, we are in peak traffic hours. Uh, but to achieve better results with double DBQ network and hand size compared to the other configuration, even uh, like uh, for off peak traffic. Tables here show models performance maximum values. Uh, double DBQ network with hand size show values in peak and off peak times in all of three metrics, max car speed, max Q, and max. Uh, in this project, we address the problem of optimizing traffic signal timing using a reinforcement learning approach. Uh, we propose a multi-Asian reinforcement learning solution, and we compared three different configurations, and our experimental results showed uh, reduced cumulative delay when using double DBQ network with hand side experience replay. Thank you, and if you have any questions.